Hello guys and welcome to Steve Knows. It's that weekly update time again and we have games, we've got headsets, virtual reality regressions and virtual reality firsts. But before we get started on this video, this video is sponsored by VR Cover, which I am going to donate some of that sponsor to another small YouTuber, Virtual Reality Checks GoFundMe. His auntie is suffering and is sick with a bone marrow cancer and cannot afford the medical bills for treatment. So I will link the GoFundMe down below as well if you guys want to help try save a life. I really appreciate anything you do. So let's get back to the video, but first of course, the sponsor. VR Cover is one of the largest Oculus Quest accessory providers with them being sold on the official Quest website. I've used their facial inserts and grips before and I can vouch for their superb comfort and quality. The facial inserts increase your comfort with Velcro attachments for easy swapping out of the inserts for better virtual reality hygiene made with faux leather for easy cleaning too. The controller grips are a must accessory for any VR gamer so you can feel safe in your virtual reality environment and not worry about throwing your controller at the TV like I have. We put screen protectors on our mobile devices, so why not on our virtual reality lenses? VR cover now provide lens covers to protect against dust and damage during transportation and lens protectors that easily clip onto your Quest's existing lenses to prevent damage. Non-affiliate links are down below in the description if you are interested in any of these products. Back to the video. Thank you guys for watching that and that is enough chinwagging. Let's get started. So let's get the bad news out of the way. Last week when I did a video with lots of new games that were releasing, someone commented about Song in the Smoke, a game that I didn't mention in that video. The game was set to be released on Saturday, September 18th, but it seems Steve knows as the release date being promoted is actually incorrect. 17-bit took to Twitter to explain the date that it was wrong. The game isn't delayed, just the initial release date was incorrect. But when they announced this, they didn't provide an exact date, just that it will be in a few weeks time. So let's predict, predict October 1st. If you don't know about this game, it's the first time you're hearing it. It is a survival title. You'll gather resources, craft items, defend yourself against wild animals. And I am interested to check this game out because the AI, they boast about the AI that's in the Predators. I'm excited to finally see this game. It's been quite a long time, like six or seven months since they announced it and we still haven't seen anything. So on Thursday, Facebook revealed their Ray-Ban collaboration. My YouTube friend Thrill has bought a pair and I'm actually excited to hear his thoughts on this. So if you're interested in these glasses as well, check out his channel. I'm sure you've already heard of him. So Facebook and Ray-Ban, the sunglasses brand, have created smart glasses. It still doesn't make you look cool, Mark. The glasses are designed like that classic hipster styled shades that were hyped when I was a teenager. And these glasses include small cameras in the frame. This isn't anything new, Snapchat did this. I had some spy glasses when I was a kid that did this. So you can use the camera to capture point of view footage, which is great to get additional shots if you're a content creator. It is equipped with a five megapixel camera that captures up to 30 seconds of footage, which isn't great. That's not great quality. That's the kind of megapixels that you see in a child's toy. But it looks to capture this footage in the mobile aspect ratio. So for your TikToks, your Instagram stories, it's going to be a perfect fit. My favorite thing about this camera though is the built-in microphone and audio. So you can take phone calls and listen to music from your phone with it connected to the phone via Bluetooth. The glasses are also integrated with Facebook assistance, allowing you to use voice controls to control the device. So it seems great for something that you want to use for capturing memories. The glasses are priced at $299, or if you're in the UK, £299. I'm not happy about that. The exchange rate is just completely out. And that's just the base model. So maybe it's going to have to be a birthday or a Christmas present. Please, Santa, you owe me. Or you can pay more for additional special transition lenses or polarized lenses. The glasses do not contain AR tech in them, which I was hoping. It looks like they've kind of taken Apple AirPods and some sunglasses and just turned that into a single package. I am interested to how people are going to react about having recording on people's faces, even though everyone around is just holding up phones, recording everything anyway these days. So I feel like the glasses are not going to be as much of an issue, but it's going to bring up some old resentful memories of Google Glass. It's an interesting time for virtual reality right now. It's it's just been so fast paced, so fast growing. We've had growth month on month on month and the hype is real, but recently I can't be the only one that feels like this. What's going on with virtual reality right now? It feels like the pace has 
slowed down. That could be due to lockdown being lifted. Summer is here, so we want to go out and play. The fact that the games that we crave are not being produced. So the Steam VR statistics for the last month show a drop in the Oculus Quest 2 usage by 0.4%, which granted doesn't sound like much at all. But the total drop for virtual reality overall went from 2.07% to 1.74%, which doesn't sound that bad, but that's actually a drop of 15%, which is pretty big. Putting us back around to the usage of VR eight or nine months ago, I would love to hear your thoughts on this change. What factors do you think have attributed? Myself, of course, as I said, I think it's a mix of summer, the lack of games. Personally, I am waiting for Resident Evil 4 and you don't have long to wait. So there is a new VR social experience that at first glance you think, eh, but actually I think this is kind of cool. So this new release is Pierhead Arcade. It's like an arcade when you visit the coast and you go to the pier and they have that crazy, crazy arcade that you just want to spend all of your money in. It's like that but in virtual reality. So in this arcade environment, there are over 30 different arcade machines for you to try. So things like ring toss, ball throw, air hockey, bowling, 30 is quite a lot. The game is a port of Pier Arcade 2 on PC and would include all of the DLC that was in those releases. It has tons of customizations for your avatar as well with over 500 different variations. So you online, you can be a unique character. Well, one in 500. There are also 30 accessories that you can buy for the arcade with the tickets that you get from playing the games. Just adding to that classic nostalgia I had as a kid when I was going to the arcade with my father and just playing on all of these machines, getting those tickets and getting so excited. I got all of these tickets and what can I get? A pen. Since this game is a port of the PC game, it is confirmed that it's going to support cross-platform play with PC as well. So the game is going to allow you to hang out with friends and enjoy the arcade online or as a LAN. Meaning in your own home, you can bring the boys around or the girls and just visit this arcade, hang out and play. It will cost you $15, but you can create some great memories at home with your kids if you've got a family or with friends. I think it's just, I think it's kind of nice. You can really utilize and make something special out of this title. Now let's talk about a game that kind of, it went viral in the virtual reality space when it first showcased back when it was a single developer working on this title. And the game ended up being picked up by Vertigo Games, which is a well-known decent studio. So unplugged the virtual reality air guitar experience where you can play with hand tracking for the ultimate air guitar experience has more details and more gameplay. The game is going to follow the classic rock band progression where you'll be playing in dive bars and as you improve, you'll work your way up to larger and better crowds. There are nuances in the game as well, like there are mini games such as mid song, you're gonna have to tune your guitar, which is actually a common thing that you'll see at live gigs, it's a common issue. And in the latest video as well, you can see there are different notes to be hit. It's not just going to be all four fingers all the time. There's going to be different chords, different variations, which I'm so, so glad to see. And to make the game seem even more official, the guitars and the amps are going to be real life brands. So we're going to have the Gibsons, we're going to have the Fenders, we're going to have the Orange Amps, the Marshall Amps, which I think is going to be such a nice touch because if you've ever played something like Pro Evo, all the team names are just something random and it just... Uh, it just kind of takes away from the experience. Another game, a new experience is out right now for the Quest, for the Rift, and for Steam VR. It's called Brink. And this comes with an Oculus home environment when you purchase the game, which is crazy that we're actually seeing this. We've said this many, many times before that when we buy a game, perhaps it can have this added bonus or a pre order bonus, such as if we just bought Beat Saber, we can turn our home environment into Beat Saber. That's something that we wanted, and we're finally seeing a game that is doing that. And I hope this is the start. And I'm sorry for being hyped. I'm just. I'm really, I'm very excited about that. Like Resident Evil 4 home environment, please, please. Brink is going to cost you $10 and in it, you'll explore stunning locations around the world that have been captured with the amazing photogrammetry and LiDAR technology. So you'll get full 3D volumetric locations in virtual reality, which means if you have the space, you can have a nice little walk around these environments as well. And my goodness, does it look incredible? This is all captured in real time as well. So what you're seeing in the game, in the experience is a real time capture of the environment. And I guess this experience is like a self-guided museum tour, but you don't have to leave your home and it's cheaper. So now a game that kind of just popped up and surprised me from VR Works, they have released Paranormal Activity, The Lost Soul on Oculus Quest. This was available on the Rift platform previously. Actually, I still wonder why do we call it the Rift platform yet they discontinued the headset. So it doesn't exist within the product range anymore. So why don't they call it something like Quest PC? Cause that's kind of what it is. Anyway, it doesn't matter. 
So this is going to cost you $20 minus a cent, so $19.99, and it's an original story and contains what they call a scare randomizer. So it will make sure that you cannot predict the scary moments. But I don't know about this game. Virtual reality horror games are exhausting. I need a swimsuit when I play them because I just, I sweat so much. The anticipation of being scared is horrifying. There is an immersive mode as well, which remove all of the HUD elements and the on-screen guidance. So it's just gonna be you and your wits for the ultimate scare. I recognize the element in the trailer as well from a flat screen experience many, many years ago, and I cannot for the life of me remember what it's called. I think people thought it was gonna be a Silent Hill game. I just can't remember. If you know, if you know, please comment down below. And also let me know if you like horror games because virtual reality takes horror to a whole new level. And I wish they would do more cooperative horror experiences like Phasmophobia, so you're not alone because then you kind of want to dive in again. When it's just a solo experience, I'm kind of scared and I'm a bit anxious to try and play the game on repeat. So let me know your thoughts down below. The time has come. We have spoken about this headset many times over the past couple of years, and it's not too long ago, they announced that they were going to bring the Lynx R1 to the consumer market, and it started off as an enterprise device. So the Kickstarter is approaching, so by the end of this month, you will be able to back this headset, and this headset, it's something different than most. It's not just an alternative device that we normally see, like, oh, a Quest 2 competitor. So this device was offered at 1500 for business, and it's gonna be around 500 hundred for consumers which is a pretty great price because not everyone can cut losses like Facebook. You can also spend $700 and get a clear case headset to see the internals which is actually kind of cool and they've damn me they've got me by the balls there an extra 200 for a clear case. <sighs> so the headset includes ultra leap hand tracking which is fantastic an XR2 mobile chip 1600 by 1600 resolution per eye a 90 hertz refresh rate on an LCD screen 128 gigabytes of storage which I know right now this kind of sounds like it's the Oculus Quest headset but there is more it has 6 gigabytes of LPDDR5 and it will include eye tracking as well as including fourfold catadioptric freeform prism lenses which is a mouthful i know but this allows for the panels to be closer to the eye resulting in a smaller form factor which in turn improves the comfort of the headset but it's not all great it only has a 90 degree field of view which is a step backwards and it doesn't come with controllers and it doesn't support any mainstream brands either although they said it supports the Finch controllers, so the headset is designed to be used with hand tracking. But considering the price and the eye tracking, the storage, the memory, the form factor, and the fact that they're not making a loss on it, it's not a bad offering. And that's not all it has. It also has a high quality colored pass-through allowing for AR capabilities. They did show us their AR capabilities, showing us the solar system as they were walking around an office. It looked incredible. So you can hook this up to Steam VR as well via USB-C and it supports OpenXR. So I think this headset is actually really, really interesting. Even if it is early days, you know, it's a Kickstarter project. It's not released yet for consumers. It's kind of like the first iteration. There's enough here that as an enthusiast I'm actually really really excited to try out and for a great price so I think I'm actually going to back this one. It seems virtual reality is more of a revolution than I initially thought with a new study and the study is the first of its kind that's evaluated the use of virtual reality in creative arts therapy. Creative arts therapy is the type of therapy used to help people communicate tough experiences that people find it hard to express and talk about in the usual way. I can talk from recent experience that I did speak to someone and I found it extremely difficult to discuss what it was that I was going through, what it was I was feeling, there was intense anxiety and the anticipation of judgment that you feel. It can be really intense and then having to get the words out whilst you're in that state becomes incredibly hard. So the question is, how do you enable people? Well, Drexel University College of Biomedical Engineering, Science and Health Systems have evaluated the activity in the prefrontal cortex in drawing tasks using virtual reality. They also added a fragrant stimuli because VR detaches you from reality, it can be really immersive, and they wanted to ground their patients, keep them, keep them grounded in the real world whilst partaking in these therapies, these experiments. So they'll be using virtual reality to complete a rote tracing task, which is basically just tracing around existing shapes, which showed an increase in focus and the self-expressive drawing task where they could just be creative and draw anything showed reduced frontal cortex load and induced a state of relaxation and flow. 
potentially making it easier for them to then express tough, difficult memories during their therapy sessions. So we knew this as avid gamers, that virtual reality is incredibly immersive, it completely takes you out of the world, it's a great form of escapism. But of course, the normal consumer, the general population are still being educated in VR. So what they're doing currently with like pen and paper or a coloring book, you can now do in virtual reality with much better results. I know it's a bit of a random story, but it's the first study of its kind and it shows the power of VR, that it goes beyond just gaming and it can actually be used to make the world a better place and help people and it just fills me with joy. I absolutely love it. So that's it for me today, guys. Thanks for watching to the end of the video, getting caught up on the latest and greatest in the virtual reality space. Please consider also donating whatever you can, if possible, to the GoFundMe down below in the description to help someone fight against cancer. And please consider subscribing. Such a small deed from you means the world to me and makes such a difference in helping spread the VR love. Hopefully I'll catch you guys next time. Have a great weekend. Happy gaming. Good day.